man, I choked on the way in. Hey, good morning, everybody. Whoa. <laughs> Welcome to Lord Forged, <laughs> the podcast for Ashes of Creation. This is episode 60. Finally in a new bracket. It took us a while, but we got there. And we are your hosts. My name's Jibs, and I'm joined by Cash. Hey. Yeah, everybody, that was the ultimate in the rubber band. The rubber band. The rubber band. <laughs> band. <laughs> Very nice to be back on the microphone. It has been a long week, and I'm happy to be here. We can talk about it in a couple of minutes. But first, oh, yeah. Jibs, there's another person here. There is, and his name is Sonny Ravencourt. I'm not playing the rubber band game. Oh, why do you have to ruin <laughs> it, you know? <laughs> we had a thing. It was a thing. It was our thing. Wasn't there? I do love. There is something about like amateur radio that just draws out that rubber band yeah, in does. everybody. They oh. they think that it is just like the height of radio personality. So I love. Look at Cash. He took it personal. I know he did. <laughs> Absolutely he really did. love how you called me out. Right yep. There, there it is. is. <laughs> There's something about you. You could have stopped at amateurs. Yeah. Something about something amateurs. about working with amateurs and a uh, rubber band. I can't quite put my finger on. It. Yeah. You are not a professional. Stop rubber banding. <laughs> oh, boys, it's good to be back on the radio waves. I feel like it's been forever, but it's just been a week. Yeah. It's Has it only week. been a week? I guess we missed the one the week before that when we went to uh, Tennessee. So, yeah, that was the one. I think it's because we did, we just had a busy week. Right. And like, yeah, I mean, it was a jam-packed week for me and admittedly admittedly i woke up this morning i was off today i had some stuff to do so i woke up this morning got all the stuff done which i'll talk about here in a second but about 30 minutes before the show before the show was getting ready to start i was editing a video and i literally had a holy crap moment and went Oh my God, we have a show in 30 minutes. <laughs> so like looking at notes and get my, get my stuff ready. But, um, so literally I just got done. I started eight o'clock this morning and I did eight and a half hours of, um, cooking and filming for the Halloween version of the Varen Chef. Oh it man. It was crazy how fast the day went by today. I was having how, a blast. How good does your house smell right now? My house smells amazing. It smells <laughs> like meat. I'm not gonna give it up because th this one's really fun, you guys. I'm not gonna give it up, but I will give up that I started drinking tequila at nine o'clock this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. I sussed that one out on a text message. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. When I get when I get like super cheesy on text messages and tell these guys, I love you guys. Oh, yeah. It's so much fun. I love doing this content with you. I'm usually drinking one of these glasses that are full. <laughs> <laughs> no shame. Uh, no tequila. Shame. You went tequila, huh? Yeah, tequila. Like, yeah, tequila sunrise. Almost. Oh. Almost exactly. Because <laughs> I started at 9 a.m. My wife left. My daughter was my daughter went to work and I was just getting stuff ready, setting up the, the set and getting my cameras all where they're supposed to be. And I went, you know what? There's no better time than right now to start drinking on an empty stomach. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> Tequila Sunrise has a very, very warm spot in my heart. That is one of my favorite drinks. It was one of the first drinks I remember um, a guy made for me. I was working as a water ski instructor. Uh, at of a, uh, course you were. <laughs> at a resort and i went to a party and this this uh older guy who was also a water ski instructor is like what are you drinking and i'm like i don't know and he's like let me make you something and he made me this drink and it was a tequila sunrise and it's just like oh you know and like a cooler older uh like dude that we work with does something nice for you and it just it just lives in it for free rent free in my head forever will be tequila sunrises so I Very do nice. love me a good tequila sunrise. I the, love the party the had the guy you... had a booth from an old McDonald's. Do you remember when McDonald's had those <laughs> hard booths? Yeah, and they had like the padding, the the rounding padding around. He, the dude had one in like his apartment. <laughs> so it's sitting at this booth in like an old McDonald's, and he brings me a tequila sunrise. I was like, this is the coolest place ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, is anybody else going to let it get by that Sonny just revealed 
yet another job he's had in the past, and that is one of the water ski instructor. <laughs> I've done a couple things, I don't know. Dude, my God. Can you dial it in a little bit? Like, I see why Kel puts limits on you. Like, I get it now. Used to, I thought, yeah. like, wow, put limits on him. No, I get it. I mean, that boy needs that leash. <laughs> Kel ain't home. <laughs> Again, proving that you are the most interesting man in the world. Oh. I love the I love Death Keepers coming. Did you ever do the pyramid water ski trick? I did not ever do the pyramid <laughs> water ski trick. <laughs> they stopped doing that in 1955, I think. <laughs> oh my! Good gosh. reason when they died trying to do it. <laughs> well, thank you again, everyone, so much for uh, hanging out with us here today. We are recording this live, by the way, over at Twitch, and welcoming everybody to Lore Force Live. Appreciate you all for being here and all your, gosh, your kindness before we even started. Oh. Just blew up the subs and everything. We got fireworks going off, and Hootie was freaking out. Sonny was dancing. Cash was running through the house uh, naked. <laughs> I mean, like, it just accelerated to a thousand. In Hootie a was on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Hootie caught fire. <laughs> Hootie stabbed the guy with a trident. Uh, right. <laughs> Hootie's uh, probably wanted for murder. <laughs> But uh, anyway, thank you so much for pushing and play, hanging out with us here today. Gentlemen, we are mere days from Alpha 2. Mere days away. And we have a pretty... How many days? Uh, eight? As of this recording? Seven days. Seven? Is it Friday, seven? right? Yeah. Is it seven? This thing comes out on Friday? Yeah. Yep. Seven days, baby. One week. Holy guacamole. Look at that. Well, been... this week on the show, we're going to be talking about... <laughs> Sorry. Updates for Lore Forged. It's uh, we have a look. We have a full show, top to bottom. We may go over. I don't even know what's going to happen today. But we got Lore Forged updates. Something that we have just released that's been in the works for a very long time, and we're excited to unveil and tell you all about it. Uh, we have an Ashes of Creation website update. We've got the next Dev update announcement. Stephen Sharif going around the bend on his interview tour. We're going to focus in on one of those interviews specifically and have a little bit of a roundtable. So, uh, gentlemen. We have been working on an update for the the Patreon thing. And let, me, let me just clear the air real quick. Like, we're not real good about talking about things that people pay for. Like, we're just not. It makes us uncomfortable and cringy. But we wanted you to be aware of these slash tools slash resources that are really cool. And uh, we've been working pretty hard over the last few months to really add more value to that Patreon, particularly the second tier. And um, Sonny, you did the video. You want to take it away? Oh, goodness. Okay, so, yes. And JB is, is absolutely right on this. Like, uh, this is not, we're not like, we're not salesmen. <laughs> Although not JB comfortable ones. is a salesman and has been a salesman. Uh, but, like, none of us really love asking people for money. And so no. when when we decided we would do a Patreon, like we really, really want to make sure that everybody can enjoy the Lore Forge content that we have uh, for free, right? So we have the show. We do the show live on Twitch. When I do my daily shows, there's like, it's it's free, right? The podcast is free. Everything is, is free. Uh, one of the things, though, is that we are suckers for really wanting to make our show look fantastic. And that sometimes does cost money. And so people have reached out and said, like, how can we support you? And one of those ways is through the Patreon. So we 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 started with a, a, a simple Patreon, uh, a, a tier one Patreon, and we gave, you know, uh, what we thought was a very good value for that. It's There's a channel for it. It's the Happy Hour channel. You get everything early, and we give you a bonus podcast once a month. And you can ask these guys. I take that exceptionally seriously as far as making sure that we get that thing on the schedule. And it is like it is out. Uh, I do not want to ever, ever miss something like that. We did have some ideas uh, for some things and they were some pretty big projects. And so we thought, you know, if we were going to do something bigger, this would be the time because these projects are I mean, they're frankly enormous. Um, and so there was five things uh that we came up with and uh, they're all uh tremendous so the first one is the c3 it is the capital crafting calculator and this is something that i have always wanted in a game that doesn't have an api if you don't know what an api is I don't actually know what API stands for. <laughs> I've never actually learned that. Um, somebody in the chat, please tell me what API actually stands for. But what it means 
is that in a game, and Guild Wars 2 is a fantastic example of this, you Guild Wars 2 will, will put out this API code and you can access it. Application programming interface. Boom. Thank you, Snow Elf Rogue and everybody else that's typing feverishly as fast as they can. This is why we have a chat. Yeah. This, of course, of course Rogue the got chat it, right? knew it. Yeah, the oh chat pushed into this. We're so idiots. basically, <laughs> and Asri says it right here, API stands for Application Programming Interface. It's a set of rules that allows software applications to communicate with each other, right? And so Intrepid holds the keys to the castle here. They don't have to communicate with anybody, and they're not going to. Guild Wars, was that ArenaNet? Yeah. ArenaNet? Yes. ArenaNet. ArenaNet decided, okay, we're going to we're going to broadcast this through an API. And so they gave everybody the ability to see what was actually happening in the economy in Guild Wars. And so people could pull that information, just data mine that information off of a feed and then build things like websites that would show you the current prices for everything that was for sale in all of Guild Wars. I mean, it was just like the whole game was available for people to pull that information out and put it on their own websites, which is cool. And it's certainly one way of doing things. Intrepid has said that they are not going to do that. And so what that means is you're not going to have easy access to finding out how much things cost. And you're not going to have easy access to making decisions like that. So I'm like, okay, that's it. We're doing it. We're building the spreadsheet I've always wanted to build. And so I had a plan and I workshopped the plan and all the things that I wanted. And then I went to Rogue and I'm like, Rogue, how do I do this? And he's like, okay, well, this one's going to take a script. And this one you can do with, you know, just writing Excel formulas and stuff like that. And so we worked on it and we came up with the C3, which is the capital crafting calculator. It is not done, but the tracker is done. And the tracker allows you to... Um, to basically follow and manually enter the prices of, of uh, different items that you want. And it gives you a lovely graph and it gives you an average and you can reset it and you can name it whatever you want. It's pretty slick. As the game goes on and actually as I get into the game, then I will continue to update this and it will continue to post onto the Patreon account. And I'm calling them like deployment models. And there's uh, I made a video on how to how to do them all and everything like that. And uh, and I'm just really excited about this whole thing. This is going to be a very big thing for me. It's going to be a ton of work, um, but it's going to be cool. And I've I've really enjoyed it. And even this like this last week, just going into New World and just churning money has been fun because I remembered like how much I love MMOs just just by being in one, you know, so it's been a long time. Number two. Hang on. Well, hang on. I don't want to okay. over. I don't, I don't okay. want to. I don't want to undershadow this because you've put a lot of work into that into C three, and what this is going to mean for a lot of people. It's a really cool tool. Yeah. And I'm I'm very like I'm very proud of you for putting in that work, and thank you to Rogue and the other folks who've helped. And it's just, it has been a really cool project to watch from the outside. I don't even know how to use it. I don't know how to use it. Okay. But you will. It is an awesome <laughs> project. I will. It's an awesome project, and I thank you for doing stuff like that. This is the kind of stuff that makes me excited for not only our community but other communities that are out there surrounding Ashes. And this again is the magic of pre-launch because we have the time to do things like this and the time to dive in to the game that we all want to be successful and to launch successfully. So that's all I'll say on that. Thanks, buddy. Good work. Agreed. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess like uh, the the thing is this, like the, the first deployment model is just the tracker. And so people might see this and be like, oh, it's a tracker. That's cool. But the next phase of it, once I can get a hold of all these recipes is going to be awesome because it's going uh, like it. I've got a section in there for calculating with the taxes, the override thing. The whole thing is built on overrides to be able to put stuff in there when you just gather your own stuff and don't have to buy it. And and I'm excited. I'm going to get right in my streams and I'm going to have that thing up and be able to use it when I want to. I'll build a whole thing where I just pop it in the the beer goes across the counter and up the thing comes and like it's going to be great. So I, I'm very excited about it. It's just it's a lot of fun to to do something like this. And man, like the community here, like I would never be able to do some of this stuff without Rogue. Like Rogue has just been so good with that. So big, big thank you to him on this thing. Like the script for the tracker is just 
wild. I, I could not have written that. The rest of it, I mean, he's just, he's a great sounding board for it. It's a great Number economy two. tool. Oh, it's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, and now, there are some other people that have built some stuff, too, like mm-hmm. Daedric. I, I yeah. don't want to overshadow that. Daedric right. came up with a tool that is it works in a little bit different way. Like, my tool is a very individual tool for you to use uh, throughout that. But um, Daedric's tool, uh, his intention is to have, like, the whole guild entering information for different zones and stuff like that, um, which is a, a little bit of a different user experience. Um, but man, he went ham on that thing. Like he, he got into Python coding and all sorts of stuff. So there's, there's a, there's going to be a lot of stuff out there. There, there really is. And I'm not saying that my thing is the best thing. I'm saying that what it is, is what I would want. I built it for me to help. (laughs) I built it for me sharing with you. I'm right. Sonny. It's like for Steven, me. though, right? Like Steven <laughs> built Ashes of Creation to be the game that he always wanted, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's... I mean, and 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 who doesn't love that? You've got a guy that loves a thing, and he built the thing that he always wanted, and that's kind of what the C3 is. Yeah. It's a great so, economy tool for, and if you're into economy, that's a kind, definitely the kind of tool you're going to want to look at. And I also know Cash was doing a little something too. Number two, Cash. Take it you away. To just explain. You want me to explain your thing? Come on, you can do that. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so, um, something that uh, that I have been interested in for years and years and years and years is uh, is health and fitness. And um, years ago, I started a project that um, I was not able to finish. Over the last uh, few months, I've picked that project back up uh, here and there, and have made a lot of headway with it. And it is uh, quickly becoming, well, it has become something that uh, that I, I kind of want to get out to the people. And if you have interest in it, then it's awesome. If you don't, then you don't. Anyway, uh, health and fitness has been a huge part of my life. And um, I was able to do a lot of research on my own. And I, let me just throw this out there. I am not a doctor. I am not a nutritionist. And I have spent a very short amount of time as a fitness coach, <laughs> very short amount of time. But um, I, can, I have been working on this project for, for the last few months now and picked it back up and I have written a book. So that book is called The Adventure's Guide to Health and Fitness. It is going to be an ebook. It is in the flavor and written in the style of the way Gamers will understand. It is written for gamers, for the most part. Uh, if you're a fantasy gamer, if you're a fantasy book reader, if you have found yourself uh, sedentary, m- maybe let yourself go, this book is written for you. Um, and it, But, you know, the thing is, one of the big things that I, that I really push in that book is um, it, it takes commitment and consistency. So if it's something that you're interested in, it will be available on our um, on our second tier of our of our Patreon. And uh, it'll also be available at a time outside of that. I'm in the um, in the editing mode right now, and then it's going to go into ebook format and then it'll be ready. So I am anticipating here within the next month or two that it will be a product worth reading if you have interest in that. So we decided to make that part of the the Patreon. So I'm looking forward to it. It's oh yeah, this is gonna. This long, is long gonna coming. Coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and oh, this yeah. is another thing too that like, and I don't want to undersell your project. Like a lot of people over the years, myself included, I remember like, oh, God, it has been like ten years ago that that I was having conversations with you, and you're always so quick to to stop what you're doing and 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 take time to help somebody else with their health and fitness, and it is it's important to you and. The people that that have typically come to you at that time are like they're looking to improve their lives and you provide them with very actionable advice. And I think that that's like one of the best parts about what you do is that it's not like it's it's not high minded this, that and it's take you years and you start from the bottom and all this other. It's like very actionable steps that you can take, like a reasonable human being can take on a daily basis to just improve their lives. Um, and, and, and so I'm excited about this. This is definitely going to be something that, that I will, uh, take close to heart and, uh, 
So good on you, man. I mean, like, what a project. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, and you know, I think the, the whole thing with, with what I'm, I'm not like selling snake oil. I can promise. I'm like, there is a lot of avenues for you, for you to go and, um, and experiment with different things that work for you to improve your, your health and your fitness. And I will say that every single thing that is in this book, I have tried at length and everything works. I would not put crap in there and try and push this off on somebody. And I will say this just to, to close this point off. Um, a few years back, we did a health and fitness challenge in, in one of our communities. And it was incredible to watch. So we did a 60 day challenge. And within that 60 days, I think we had four or five people drop out of uh, a diabetic condition. And uh, and some of those other people within that same group got off their blood pressure meds just by following a healthy lifestyle. And it was awesome. it was pretty cool. And that's what really pushed me to to get the book moving. And um, I, th I think there's value to it. So if you see value in it, it will be available for you. Perfect. 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 JB. Oh, I want God. you to tell me about some of the work that you did here. I, I, I love Sorry, it. Just just list it. It's fine. You guys okay, spent fine. years I'll, writing a book. Will, You've been coding for months. I made things look pretty. You get some wallpapers, all right? He does. You <laughs> can't you can't undersell <laughs> your ability to do this though, because like we don't have that ability. Like Cash and I look at graphic stuff and it's like, what do you think about this? And you're like, oh, good lord <laughs> like, a little bit of me please, dies on the inside please let me can you please let me handle this <laughs> so anyway jb made some wallpapers for us and they're pretty sweet they're pretty slick the the he made um three branch ones he made the warden the warborn the uh and capital not the capital capital and uh he made one uh with the loreforge logo that's got like just the most subtle loreforge text in the background at the angle i really like that one actually oh thank you and uh yeah it's just super cool it's a it's a thing that's on there and jb's a, a obviously a graphics guy and i'm sure that over time you know if he comes up with other stuff he'll just throw it on that that tier as well because uh that's it, it's just he just does a great job with it so Thanks, we can't thank him enough for all of the all the ways that he makes us look pretty JB Maybe is truly the glue behind the scenes. Cannot understate that. No, um, glue. Thank you. Number the Elmer's glue. <laughs> it's more like a wood glue, but you know. <laughs> uh, it's number four is a newsletter, which is going to be another thing yeah, that, that JB uh, is going to help uh, heavily with. Um, the newsletter that we're going to be coming out with is a once a month thing, and that is going to be. As I described in the video, not a crappy newsletter, but a good newsletter. Yeah. Um, it, it's going to have some like behind the scenes stuff and uh, and lore bits and like what I'm working on in game uh, economy wise and just just some fun. It's it's just another thing. And then the fifth thing is, of course, the the uh, special title and the, and the color on Discord. But thank you to everybody that helped out with this thing. And uh, like I said in the video, um, it's important for you guys to know that any way that you support the show, whether that is just simply watching it and 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 enjoying it, that is what means the world to us. So thank you all for all of that stuff, um, supporting at any level, including the base level of just showing up and saying hi in the chat during a daytime stream that I do. That is fantastic. So we are having the time of our lives. We couldn't be happier with where the show is at. And we are like a week away from playing this game for the first time ever. Yes. And it is just, it's a, it's a magical time. I could have done without Intrepid stacking everything on Friday. <laughs> that was a bit much. But yeah. uh, that is the next thing that's on the calendar. JB, the dev update just dropped. Yeah, it is. So uh, next dev update has been announced. This is from the Ashes of Creations Twitter. And so they say, quote, our next dev development update live stream is coming to you live on Friday, October 25th, 2024 at 11 a.m. Pacific. Now that is 2 p.m. EST. For all of you on the Eastern Time Zone, they say, quote, the team is excited to talk all things Alpha 2 with you on its first official day. Now, I don't know that they've given a time to those servers opening yet. So this could be smack dab in the middle of it. It could be they're waiting until after that when they push the big green button. 
Like we don't we don't really know what's going to happen. So that'll be fun. Uh, I, 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 I was surprised to see when they were going to do this dev update. So that makes me think that it's probably not at the same time. Hmm. Right? It, I would imagine that they're going to probably hit the button maybe in the afternoon because if they were to hit the button at 8 a.m. and then do the dev update, that will be the least viewed dev update in the history of dev updates <laughs> because everybody is yeah, going to be looking right? for shinies and Vera. <laughs> so it's like, what are you guys doing? So I bet you anything, they do the dev update and then hit the button. That's what I That'd be a great send off, honestly, especially from a marketing standpoint. That's yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a big day. Wow. I can't believe we're here almost. Oh, man. And that's I'm nuts. not going to be like available. That's the real thing, right? Like I am. What normally I would stream this kind of thing. I have. This is my thing. This is my, oh my once gosh, a year. Sonny. Symbols. <laughs> I play symbols <laughs> with the you alumni band. <laughs> I have I smash a pair of symbols and do little flips and everything in the alumni parade. And then the next morning I wake up and I go do game day at Kinnick. I do pregame and the whole deal. I'm in the stands and everything like that. Once a year. Not and Sunday, water skis. <laughs> Monday, he's a doctor. So I've been doing this for like 20 years. I basically lead to this drum line of like. <laughs> Uh, like it's like a clown car honestly there's 70 years between some of these drummers and i have to get them like around the parade without them like throwing clots it's unbelievable <laughs> so <laughs> did you say, did you say you do flips <laughs> i do, i have like the with the symbols they're huge huge symbols okay. i was they're making sure like piece, you're not doing plates. like bodily flips because at this age I, you're probably gonna throw a hammy i did in college <laughs> in college uh, we would flip over the back of each other um that was yeah. a long time ago <laughs> in the galaxy well, it's far far away it's better it's better than catching a nut <laughs> Do you know which is a whole other story. story that has yielded over the course of the week Dude. people are still catching that and they're like uh, did yeah. you hear the story about cash's nuts yeah <laughs> Dude, that happy hour channel has been moving. Uh, that is just maybe we'll tell that story next week. We just have too much going on. Yeah, this week. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you can check out the live update October 25th at 11 a.m. PST. Guys, I think probably one of the biggest things to come out of Ashes of Creation this week, aside from the interview tour that Steven's been doing, and of course the dev update is their website update that they did. And this oh, is the first yeah. time we have seen this from Intrepid. Uh, well, I think ever that we've seen it. I know uh, I'm just kind of roll back, uh, roll the tape back a little bit. Cash, when we were here in 2021 with Lore Seekers, it was the same site. It was the same thing. And so this is all we've ever known. You know, fast forward now. This is all we have know. This is all three of us know. And seeing the updates that they made, they added. Do you guys see the Tolnar lore edition? Yes. Ah, uh, oh, you stole my thunder. That was exactly where I was going. <laughs> take it, take it, baby. Tolnar, have you seen the Tolnar? <laughs> I have. I actually have. It's like, do you know how excited the Ashes community gets when you get a Tolnar lore drop? Like they just go crazy. Yeah. They yeah. have created this race that we've never seen in games before it's a plausible thing they've got a whole backstory that makes sense they're tribal they're living in the underground like they're they're this whole thing and then you 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 see this drop where they just they they have pictures and they they lay it out and and cash i just wanted to go to you on this one like when you saw that kind of thing does that not just like warm your little lore heart that that you're starting to see this kind of stuff it does. And it, it excites me very much because uh, for for years, Stephen has said that uh, they're keeping lore close to their chest and he and uh, he really wants people to experience the world that that he's built. I mean, if you think about some of your favorite books out there, right, you think about Lord of the Rings, you think about um, the Wheel of Time series and um, the uh, just the Forgotten Realms, whatever you're into, right, uh, within fantasy or sci fi. All of those stories started with world building. 
And that is w exactly what Stephen has been doing, um, what the team has been doing. He's taken this idea and then allowed people, the agency, to just build for him and build along with him with his vision. And it's now at a point to where they are on a, almost on a regular cadence now. They're starting to drop um, just more tidbits of lore. And these are the things that, that we are personally very, very into. Uh, so to see this thing about the Tolnar was was just very, very happy. For Let me, I'll start with the site, right? The website to me is, is gorgeous. I, I really love the style that they went with, but you usually see this when games are starting to get on more of a release footing. And that is, I'm not speculating anything about release, right? There's a long way until release, but I would be very surprised if the website doesn't even go through yet another iteration before the actual launch. But what this is doing is it's going along with their schedule of progression and evolution of what Ashes of Creation is to become. And the website did it. It needed it. It needed a change. It was it was great anyway, but it did need a change to give it to give the game the current flavor of where it is. And it's closer to launch. It's not there yet, but it's closer to launch. One of the things with the Tolnar that really hit me was that we had it. We had we had posed a question. Uh, it had come up in some of our videos, and we had talked about it before about. Did the did the Tolnar like stay down there forever? Like when all those races went down there during the apocalypse, right? Like were they did they come back out or did they just hunker down and stay there until much, much later? And this lore on the Tolnar actually answers the question. It says mysterious magical wards throughout the massive caverns sealed them all underground until the divine gates reopened unexpectedly. And I assume those magical wards faded out and allowed them to leave. There's so much to that, even beyond the Tolnar there. Like, you're talking, like, what was yeah. going down on Vera. It's talking about how the ancients ravaged the world above. Like, so we know that was going on. And, you have, and, and you know, to kind of go off what you're saying, the part about this that really shocked me the most with the Tolnar, I really thought that they would be... And um, Richie, Richie um, on uh, on Twitter, uh, we're, we're kind of going back and forth. He was shocked as well. We really thought they'd be a little bit more feral is not the right word, but a little bit more like visceral, the way that they act, maybe because of the way that they look. But, you know, really right off the bat, they talk about how they're united in one crucial belief that corruption must be fought wherever it creeps. I mean, like in that they're refugees that not only survived, but thrived. You know, and they really just kind of have that whole tribal. It and honestly, in a lot of ways, this reminds me of the horde, banding together to survive and make your way through through the world. Well, I mean, but really think about it too. They're children of corruption, so yeah. it makes plenty of sense for them to have, to be driven to fight it. Right. Well, one of the other things too that makes you think of the horde is that um, the the basis of the Tolnar has always been tribalism. Like they are a very tribal culture. And so right. you know, a big Tolnar city was a surprise when we found out that that was uh, maybe a possibility because you don't think of like tribal stuff as having a big city, but then, you know, you have the horde and you have places like Orgrimmar, right? Like those are tribal cities and, and they get together and, and, and it's, it's just kind of an interesting thing, but that is is certainly something that um, that I was very surprised with too. Like that explanation of why did they stay down there so long? And the answer is they couldn't get out. <laughs> like they were sealed in there. Yeah, like, it oh. almost it almost reminds me. It almost compels me to believe that the goddess of creation, when she made those portals and realized that not everybody got out in time. She sealed some of the people who who took some of the races that took refuge underground. She sealed them there almost like um, like a like a fallout type deal. Right. Where they're yeah. sealed in there like that. This is your new life. You do not go topside. 
everybody in chat dark. and me and we all had the same thought at the exact same thing. It was like, this is Fallout. <laughs> it's Fallout. Or, or what was that? Um, there is, there's a great series on Apple TV. Silo? Silo. Oh. Fantastic series. If you have not seen it, it is excellent. And Good it is, the, it's the same the same type of thing like fallout but they're they're not it's not necessarily in a vault they are in a silo that goes like straight down into the earth and that is the life that they know like there's there's a whole society and hi and hierarchy and everything under there and um and that's what this really leads me to believe that that is what the tolnar experienced over millennia when they um when they evolved down there so I, I like it. It makes the race way more interesting to me. Yeah. To watch. Do you think that there's yeah. going to be like, and this is going to get a little dicey, but like almost like Tolnar racism. Like, can, can you imagine if you are the elves running like this university and stuff like that, and you have these Tolnar showing up like they, they are different. Like right. the Tolnar are culturally different. They're physically different they look different they are they have been underground for god knows how long like they're very different and i wonder like in game how they will be treated from like a lore standpoint are they going to be treated like they're different or is everybody kind of walking through the portals being like the first day of high school when you don't really know anybody and you're like all right well hey do you want to sit together at lunch <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, could you imagine Jibs sitting down with, because it, we have definitely experienced over the years in playing these games, exactly how racist elves can be, <laughs> like yes. insanely racist. But could you imagine this snooty high elf sitting down uh, to some community dinner or even like some kind of a town hall and a freaking Trandoshan walks in? <laughs> <Just> <laughs> takes a seat at a stool in the corner and just stares with their little tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Old lizard. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think there's uh, Sunny. I think that's I think that's a good point. I think you're probably going to see that because we know that there's some conflict already with the families that have come through, particularly at the uh, the Aelin, uh one of the Aelin portals that they came through. That there's already drama between families, between, you know, starting off. So I can't imagine a world where you, if you have rich, snooty folk coming through the portal in the moment they first time, you know, the first time they see a, a seven foot tall dragon-esque human being wrapped in bones and horns and glowing eyes is going to go well. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's going to go both ways. I like the part in the lore where it talks about how cautiously, quote, cautiously, they return to the surface to greet the other nations as they arrive through the archways. Keyword, cautiously. I don't think all are going to be super happy, you know, so that's going to be fun for a narrative. I think that's going to be fun for story angles. And, Cash, you're, you're not kidding, man. Like, this really makes me way more intrigued on the Tolnar. Yeah, I think uh, I think they need to, it needs to be part of their kit. They need sunglasses. Sunglasses. Come out of that hole. Yep, it's gonna be a little bright right off the Whoa. bat. Oh my god, my prescriptions. <laughs> yep. Yep. So put on their uh, wayfarers. There's that big ball of fire in the sky. It's yeah. bright. Yep. It's been a while. They're wearing, wearing their, their big old geriatric glasses. <laughs> I think of like the eclipse ones where it's just yeah. like a slit in the middle. Yep. Just got their eclipse sunglasses on. They're like. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Welcome, awesome. to, welcome to Topside, Lizard. <laughs> Look at the size of those cockroaches. It's like a Fallout. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I encourage you folks, especially everyone here who's here at uh, Lower Forge Live, if you haven't already, go check out the website AshesOfCreation.com. All kinds of wonderful, great lore, and now it's truly matched the progress of the game. So, gentlemen, the main part of the evening, Steven's been doing a, a heavy interview tour. And it's been awesome to watch. So Steven's been making rounds with various content creators, including Vladis Gaming, Yokai Theater, DA, and Mick Stackerson, Theory Forge, Voices of Vera. I th think that's it. I don't think I missed any. If I did, I certainly do apologize. But he's been bu he's been a busy boy. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. Right. And you said it the first time when you saw him, you're like, 
he looks tired and i felt bad because i think it was actually the lighting like he didn't have the greatest lighting and when you have like dark lighting your your yeah. eyes look like black and right. stuff like that i'm like oh my god he's dead <laughs> <laughs> like it's not dead <laughs> He All the die. red dimmed from his eyes. I know. Yeah, the red went out. <laughs> it's like the Terminator. <laughs> um, but yeah, like he has been. Uh, this is awesome. Like we all agree that it is fantastic that you have a guy like that that is willing to go on all sorts of different shows, big shows, little shows, stuff like that. The fact that, uh, well, you guys, I mean, you guys can attest to this. You guys went through the whole experience with uh, New World and with ESO and stuff like that. And there are certain companies that are that, that base their time from a very efficient standpoint that like, look, I'm, we're not going to go on a show unless you have X number of people that are going to watch it. And that is absolutely not the case here you just definitively cannot say that steven is not willing to put himself out there with uh with even the the smallest and newcomers of of content creation and that's spectacular cash what do you think about that i think uh, i think it's not a case of him being willing because i think steven would talk to anybody about his game if he's given the chance. And it, it's very obvious in the way that he presents aspects of his game, the game overall, his passion for the project. I, I truly believe he would talk to anybody off the street about it. I think what this shows more is Intrepid's dedication to the folks who who they know really love and care about their their project now, early before the game is launched. Um, and we've talked about it before too. And you know, there, there will be times where um, small creators like us is not, uh, we, we're not gonna be the focus. We're small creators. We don't have thousands upon thousands of people watching our stuff all the time. And that's fine. This is where we, we're very comfortable here, creating the things that we wanna create, do the things we wanna do. And it's probably not different for many of the other small content creators. But there will be a time when Ash as a creation will be on the world stage and it will be uh, showcased with a lot of the larger streamers. I do not, do not blame them for making partnerships with people like Asmund Gold and Lazy Peon and Pirate and all the and all the other folks that are out there that are that are showing massive numbers. That is how you get your game out there, regardless of whether or not. Um, the feedback is good or bad. Of course, they're looking for that good feedback, but any press is good press. So I think I think rather than, uh, you know, just to wrap it up, rather than Steven talking about it, being willing to talk about his game, I think it's more that they are they're they're willing to show that there there is some loyalty for the people who are here early and are are dedicated to getting more eyes on the game. Yeah, I mean, I mean, marketing's marketing, right? Marketing's good. It's a good thing. So it's good that he's going out and doing this thing with his current creators and um, and in the space and and I love the fact this just screams community to me. Like this is you know kind of like Sonny, you were saying that you know there's other companies that they wouldn't even bat an eye to look at you, let alone well, what's your listener viewer count? Oh, what's your Twitter or X follower count? Oh, okay, maybe not. You know, but here with Intrepid, no, they don't care. No, and and it's been very it's been very good. And and this is going to take us into the next segment here. Uh, first of all, everybody did a fantastic job on their interviews with Steven. Everybody was was great. I watched, and this is awesome because Vladis just rolled into the chat here with his little army of Vladis. <laughs> Welcome in, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing, buddy. Yeah. Perfect, Perfect timing. timing. We're gonna talk I'm about just going to gush. I'm just going to gush about this because I told Vladis this, that I think that his interview with Steven was the single most informative piece on Ashes of Creation since Lazy Peon. I truly believe that. I'm saying it here on my show. I would say it on his show. It is a spectacular, it is a spectacular interview because Vladis has been, <laughs> for better or for worse, waiting for a long time for this one. Um, he he has been preparing for this interview for a very long time, and it shows. And he loves to crowdsource the questions from his community 
and his community is very knowledgeable. We have uh, we have a fun community that that likes our style of things. His community, those dudes have got neck beards on neck beards. <laughs> they know this game. <laughs> they know this game better than anyone I know. And and the questions that they came up with were were very very good. Uh, and so he was able to ask a lot of questions, but. Um, JB, I'll, 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 I'll just ask you this. You've been with him. Like, you understand that when he's asking questions, every now and then he sneaks in a, just a personal question that was nice to see Stephen have, uh, like, a little bit of personality in there. And you let, you, you see him, you see Vladis let him be himself a little bit on, on moments like that. And, and there's a level of trust that just immediately gets established. So I really enjoyed that part. Yeah, first off, I just want to, congratulate Vladis because Vladis is hands down probably one of the best interviewers I have seen in a very long time his skill at navigating the conversation you know it's, it's like a dance and he dances very well with whatever guest he's he has there on the show um, you could tell he's taken note from from um, heavy hitters from podcast uh, podcast present and past in the way that he does his show and he's just constantly progressed and gotten better and better and he earned every bit of that interview and that interview was probably the best interview i've heard in a very very long time if not the best interview i've heard for ashes of creation with stephen sharif incredibly informative enjoyable i can go back and listen to that on repeat it was just chef's kiss from top to bottom man i mean it was just fantastic and like yeah i mean sonny he navigated that so so well and i'm gonna be honest i'm super stoked for the guy proud of him and stoked for him because that was just awesome yeah. just awesome yep so yeah we've had um we've had uh several times where you know we'll get in a conversation with lattice uh, back and forth and he's been on our show we've been on his show and it's been fantastic and um, I'm just going to echo what these folks have said, but I'm going to take it a step further. And I truly believe, and I've said this to you uh, once before, Vladis, you are the Joe Rogan of the Ashes space, of the Ashes space. And I truly, truly believe that. It is an art um, to have the ability to sit somebody down and put them at ease. And Steven's a pretty cool cucumber anyway when it comes to uh, to talking about his game and stuff. But the way you got him to open up a bit and and uh, I mean, dude, there were more nuggets in that interview again, like there are more nuggets in that interview than than we've seen in a long time. So anyway, buddy, you did a fantastic job. It was very well deserved. And uh, congratulations, because that is just so much fun to watch. Oh, it was. <laughs> yeah, it was flawless. Great flawless yeah. and, and we was, found out that steven plays dota i know yeah uh, i instantly went to dota. free time yeah yep. yeah i thought no kidding dota wow i just just he's, listened to he's just probably the guy typing one of the most, like you yeah. suck i know you uh, suckers. that's all i was thinking was like oh i like to chill out you know with like a glass of wine and maybe one of the most toxic games ever made <laughs> <laughs> so that's how i like it. Uh, i don't know about yeah. you <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome well we thought it was such a good interview that we wanted to have a kind of dive into vladis's uh interview with steven sharif so we're going to kind of do a little bit of a round table here and there is several questions that we are going to go through and uh let's hear from steven sharif himself so this question was is kind of rogue themed and vladis gaming asked the question when is the rogue showcase so let's take a listen and see what steven has to say i will say you know obviously keeping in mind that as we moved into this testing phase you know a few months ago and started bringing in the a1 testers to be a part of the pre-a2 testing um, we have we had plans that were essentially to continue, you know, development towards the rogue archetype. Mm -hmm. However, we had to stay agile and switch those plans over to um, focusing on what we are testing, as we said, test and react almost right. on a daily basis now where we're hot fixing and that the PC team has is a part of that. So gotcha. the, the development for the rogue is currently have been put on hold. We still intend to have mm. it be released as part of the phases that we discussed prior, which right. I believe the rogue is planned for phase, phase two. two, probably not at the uh, launch of phase two though. Correct. 
Yeah, it'll probably, I would imagine it's going to be shortly after the start of phase two. Okay. Um, uh, but that development will continue once we are out of this kind of hot fix uh, test and react phase. So there you go. The Rogue Showcase on hold. I saw that kind of going around the community. And that's kind of the the questions I had pooled were things that were hitters in, com- in the community space. And that was one of them. What do you guys think of the, the Rogue Showcase kind of being on, on hold at the moment? Cash? To me, a test and react phase is way more important than the release of a new a new class. Uh, that's that's base game stuff. So I also want to see the rogue very, very badly. Uh, the I want to see how the um, and I know we're going to talk about it here soon, too, but um, I want to see how the, the rogue augments are going to work with my ranger. Um, so it's very important to me to see that showcase and see how that class is going to evolve. But I still think that base game issues are way more important, especially with Alpha 2 coming out. So I'm perfectly fine holding on the rogue for now. Mm. Sonny? Yeah, I mean, this was like, this this was probably the one of the least surprising things I heard um, him talk about. Like, it was the rogue, right? Like, we're not going to get the rogue until they can actually give it to us. And God knows, like, all we've talked about is how much crunch these guys are under right now. They just need to get this thing done on Friday and Saturday and Sunday and just make it through the first weekend. So I'm not expecting the rogue showcase for a while. I don't think that it's going to be something that like, obviously I want to see it. I, there's a, there's a real world in which I main a rogue, but I'm not pushing this anymore. I don't think that this is a priority for me. I don't think it's a priority for them to be totally honest with you. They probably put this thing way on the back burner just to make sure that the boat gets away from the Harbor at this point. Yeah. And I'm I'm totally cool with that. You know, do what you have to do to get stuff ready. And I love the fact that they are on the flip side of it. I love the fact that they're willing to pivot when things need to pivot and they're not willing to put something out when it's not ready. Both of those things we've seen in the gaming space for years, things going out before it's ready, refusing to pivot and doubling down on something that maybe isn't a priority, especially when you have the community screaming at you, screaming at you, whether it be Reddit, Twitter, comment section i mean when it's blatantly obvious what the community is trying to say and you're just refusing for that pivot but in this case i love the fact that intrepid and steven and the team there they're willing to to move from something that may be important you know the rogue being a staple in not only mmorpg space but the tabletop space you know from a fantasy space for decades so they're willing to kind of sidestep that just to Make sure the quality is there and everything's up to snuff for A2 and beyond. So, yeah, definitely agree there. Definitely agree. So this next one's augment themed. And the question came up when it comes to complete classes, will the augment system provide just, quote, flavor or will we get transformed abilities into something new? Let's take a listen. I think there's a widespread of how each ability has the potential to be augmented when we implement the augmentation system. Right. I think that, I think that even in eight, the start of a two without augments present, you can see the direction that some of the passives right. have influence over your abilities. Like the base talent tree, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. We've shown that, Um, the way we've constructed in a modular way our ability system, we can drastically change an ability's effects. uh, And we will translate that over to augmentation as well and dial it up. So um, it's not just flavor. It is is fundamentally, the potential is that some of these abilities fundamentally change. That's awesome. Um, However, it's also capable that some of its flavor changes, but that's left in the hands of the player. How do they Mm -hmm. want to either stray away from their original archetype or how do they want to change some of the flavor of it? Like that is that is the customization effort that the player gets to have some agency over. When we talk about augments, all we can say right now is what our intent is. And our right. intent is to execute on it in a way where it doesn't just feel like eight archetypes. Right. So whether or not we land that intent is something people are going to have to wait and see. Um, uh, but know that our work is to ensure that it doesn't just feel like eight archetypes. 
Wow, Sonny, what do you think? Yeah, uh, it's funny because like he he answers the question in a theoretical way because that's all they really have on it at this point. But it's I get a lot of questions about like economy stuff, like what are you going to do in this situation? What are you going to do in this situation? And a lot of my answers to it just boil down to my economic philosophy in games because that's all I have right now to be able to say. It's like, my philosophy is like low inventory, stay nimble, like spend your money gathering early and stuff like that, right? Like these are philosophy type of things because you don't have anything. He's in the same boat with Augments right now. He doesn't have anything, but he has a very good idea on what he wants to build. And he has a good philosophy behind it, and he wants to make sure that he gets there. Now, he said himself, whether or not we land that is a future me problem, right? As of right now, all I can tell you is what we intend to do. And honestly, that's good enough, because I think that a lot of people, myself included, have said this is an eight-class game with flavor, and that's what it is. And he's like, no, I don't want to build that game. I want to build a 64 class game. And I'm like, okay, good luck. <laughs> but I mean, he's answering the question and that's the best that he can do right now is just show his philosophy on it. Cash? Does, does it worry you guys at all that they have advertised 64 classes, right? through the augment system, the eight archetype system can go to 64, meaning that you can build a combination of any of the eight archetypes with any, with any of the eight archetypes for 64 total, right? Does it worry you that if they truly build this augment system to where it is not just flavor? I know he said some of some of the skills might just be flavor dependent upon how the player builds their class. But wouldn't you think that if a ranger went and hybrid with a mage, that some of the ranger's bow abilities might look a little more magey, a little more arcane, right? Wouldn't you think that would be a reasonable thing to say? Possibility. Possibility, right? If that were to be the case, and there were truly 64 classes with augments that would give your particular class flavor, you, we are looking at about, say there's 20 or 30, we'll say there's 30 skills per class. And now you take those skills and you augment them with another class is 30. You're looking at like 2,000 a possibly 2,000 animations that they might have to make different. That is a large undertaking. Very yeah, large the, undertaking. The numbers start to get a little mind-bending, don't they? I'm, I'm not even good with math. I might have totally effed that math up. But to me, that's <laughs> 30 times 64, right? 64 different classes. And even if it's halved, let's say that I did screw the math up and it's just about 1,000. That's a thousand animations. It's a lot that have to look different. It's a lot. So I'm not saying that I'm not excited about this. I'm not saying that I didn't like the way he answered the question because I love the way he answered the question. But if it goes beyond just flavor for your class, that is the possibility that we might be facing with this. And even if, even if they're just small changes, they're still changes that have to be built into each hybrid character so it is a little scary to me if that is the reality of of what we're looking at unless they're already well on their way you know what i mean so and i don't know like sunny it sounded like like you didn't think that they were that they were very deep into this system yet no and they're not uh and 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 Steven alluded to that, that like, this is something that they just have not spent a lot of time on at this point. Um, I don't, I mean, like I get your math on that thing, but that's like in a perfect mathematical world where everything has to be unique like that. Like 
we're we're not making Hanna Barbera cartoons here, where Fred Flintstone runs past the same window over and over and over. <laughs> but at the same time, we're probably going to reuse some assets on some of this stuff and some of that right. flavor stuff. Some of these animations, some of these mechanics are going to be recycled in, in in various ways. So I don't necessarily think that you're going to get that pure mathematical individuality. But you're not wrong. Like if if you if you want to take away flavor and make it meaningful, it, it just inherently means that you have to put more work into it. Uh, that's the only way that you get past that. And so that's that's work, man. And it is it is a big part of the game. It is not like a little system. It is a big system. So I don't know. This is going to be something that we're going to have to see. He's got goals. And he's going to push the team in that direction. And we've been surprised by how efficient and how effective they've been before. So maybe we'll be surprised on this one. JB? Let me ask you guys this. Would you be okay if the game launches without the augment system and it arrives within an update in the first year of launch? Ooh... Uh, it's, mm. I know it's kind of a can of worms. Kind of sorry. I would be because I've said this is an eight class system, but for the people that disagree with me, they would not be okay with that. Sounded like I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> uh, bro, it was on I the don't teleprompter. Know. I had to read it. <laughs> wait, wait, you guys have a teleprompter? <laughs> Damn, I'm just going off the cuff. Um, <laughs> Jibs, I don't think so, bro. Mm. I, I I could see, yeah, I, I could know. see them expanding upon and make like beautifying and uh, and you know making things prettier over time. Which games do that a lot. Like they change their base skills all the time to make them look better. Mm -hmm. That would be fine if over time they added the visual things i'm fine with that i don't think i'm okay with i mean it just let's put it this way i'm gonna play the game whether or not the augment system is in there at launch i'm i'm gonna be playing the game for the long haul so i don't i like i don't care but i think there would be a lot of there'd be a lot of upset people out there because i'm okay with and i think a lot of people would be okay with the naval system not being not being in right away, right? Certain maybe there's certain zones that are going to be expansion zones or whatever. They're not in there right away, but the augment system is just too damn important. I think it is base game it's crucial. It's crucial. crucial. It is it is how you build your character. It is something that's accessible at level twenty five when you pick your secondary archetype. So I think to have the nuts and bolts of that system in place is probably the best mode of action. I read an article today that um, it, this guy was basically alluding to D&D, &D, how he had played it for years and years. And, and, you know, over time, he saw the more flaws and flaws, the more he played it. And one thing that they mentioned was how D&D, &D, Wizards of the Coast specifically, is not allowed to really take chances and do things maybe outside the box that other games maybe like uh, Pathfinder can do because they have such a large swath of the audience, a large, just a overwhelming portion of that genre. And so they felt like they couldn't take chances. And the point being that if they were, they would really tick off their, a very, potentially tick off a very large portion of that audience. Do you feel like that's that would be the same case if this were to... If this system were to come in late, I I just think that it's it, this is this is too close to the heart, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is too close to the core game that was advertised. I mean this this was in the Kickstarter, right? Like, yeah. The the combination of the classes. I I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure this has been in since the beginning. That that this is a game that is built off of your ability to have classes like that, not just an eight class game. I hope I'm right about the Kickstarter thing. I could be wrong on that, <laughs> but it, it feels <laughs> like it's been like an it's been a a a core component of the whole thing. And God knows one of the first things that any fan of this game 
has done is looked at that chart and said, where am I? Which one of these things am I? And it's, it's, it's just too, it's just too important to not have at launch. Like he didn't say, Hey, this is a naval game. And then at launch is like, uh, but we don't have naval. Combat. We don't have water. It's like, <laughs> yeah, we don't have water. You know, I mean, no, it's just not the case. But, but he did definitely say this is a game with 64 classes. So hmm. I don't think he can pull it. We're sorry. You guys aren't going to be able to swim. You're just going to have to walk along the bottom of the <laughs> ocean. Also, you'll die. Hey, there's a game I know that they could use for a template off that. Uh, well, not, got, not anymore. <laughs> but not anymore. They added it. Finally, yeah. good on them. Yeah. Good on them. Yeah. <laughs> good on them. Good on them. All right. So the next one is talking about leveling experience. How fast or slow will the leveling leveling experience be? Has that changed? Let's take a listen. Well, I mean, as you would expect, you know, we have a diverse set of opinions within the studio about it as well. Yeah, um, I'm sure. My <laughs> my um, my current uh, approach in balancing leveling through one through twenty five is a roughly one hundred hours of gameplay um, is what it takes to get to level twenty five. Now wow. that is not a that is not a linear curve, right? right. This is right. something. This is something obviously <laughs> where we want to get players. Um, you know, exactly. quickly to huh. let's say level 10 or level 15 or whatever. Right. And then, right. and then it starts to slow down. You know, my idea there um, might be a bit more on the grindy side. This, this is obviously subjective, um, right. but, but I think it ties in again to that risk versus reward philosophy. Right. right? Um, you know, it, 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 we're spreading out also things that can contribute to leveling. It's not all yeah. just through grinding, Right. There's quests, there's artisanship, there's, you know, gathering, there's PVP, like those things all contribute to gaining progression experience. And there's a lot of different dials along the progression path that people have the ability to interact with, whether it be their weapon level progression or their, you know, adventuring class progression or their artisanship level progression. You know, there's areas where players are going to be distributing that focus. Um, so yeah, I think it's something that we'll collect feedback on from the community as well. What do you think of that one, boys? Cash? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I almost spit water out of my mouth when Night Possum in chat said, that's five years in dog hours. A <laughs> <laughs> oh. hundred, hundred hours to, uh, to level 25. I am all about it. Yeah. I love it. Yes. Um, and, I, and I think Vladis kind of had the same thought, too, in, in the interview is just that games nowadays have just been on easy mode. MMOs have been on easy mode with allowing people to get to end games so quickly. I think the, the latest one is Throne and Liberty. I mean, there were people hitting max level in that game in like eight hours. Oh, my gosh. Dude, what? that's it's bubkiss man i'm what? sorry that's just stupid and there you know the the game starts at max level mm -hmm. man shut up <laughs> no it doesn't there is so much content there that happens before that and when you're speeding through it like dude you deserve it that's you not an rpg to be bored it's not an RPG, man. It's about the experience. It's about that leveling process and enjoying what you're doing. That to me means there is a lot to be done from level one to 25. And not just in the other systems that Steven was talking about either. I'm talking about content wise, exploration wise. And again, guys, this is a, I always hate it when YouTubers say that. Okay, guys, sorry. So I won't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> it drives me crazy. Um, adventures. I'll call you adventures. Um, it, it just goes to show me that there is so much content and exploration to be done. And again, adventures. This is a sandbox-ish MMO. There's a lot of sandbox um, aspects of this game. And that allows the player to make your own content. And that is going to be a big part of this running caravans, running the economy, trying to build your node and defend your node, trying to subterfuge other nodes. 
that is all part of the process. And as long as there's experience tied to those things in, in even if they're in low amounts, it gives exponential amount of replayability to this game. And on top of that, if you have a longer leveling experience, you get that connection to your character. So I am all about a longer leveling experience. And I was so happy to hear that. Sonny? Yeah, I, I'm not going to belabor this point. Cash basically said uh, everything that the, the two of us would probably agree with. Right, JB? Um, it, 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 is, it is ironic, though, that everybody in here agrees with you. And everybody in the chat, I can tell right now, agrees with you. And we still will have people in our community that are like, we need to level as fast as we can. Otherwise, we're going to miss out on the node possibilities. Don't care. And they're not wrong. They're not wrong. Like there is mechanics in this game that the first person to get to those levels and the first guild to have people at those levels is gonna get a castle. For They're time. gonna get a metropolis. They're gonna get stuff like this because that's how you get it, is you just rip through this crap. And we have repeatedly said that we are not going to do that. And will it cost us some of that stuff? Yes. It will. I guarantee it. I'm telling you right now, that will cost us. However, if we play this game long enough, which we all intend to do, then it won't matter in the long run. But it's crazy. Like, everyone agrees philosophically that's the way to do it, and yet they all look at this stuff and go, but it, we're going to, the other guild's going to vassal us. And I'm like, yep, <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Totally get it. Yep. But you know what? In games like this where there's movement, when, you know, like vassals, you may not be a vassal forever. You know, like there's, yeah, there's no rush for me because you only get that, you only get that leveling experience once. That first time, once. So, yeah. And just because someone gets to max first, okay, I get that. And, you know, yeah, they'll have things before, you know, we do. And that's fine too. But doesn't mean it stays that way. You know, last I checked, PvP destroys the world. <laughs> so you yeah. know we're gonna have a good old time there and um, this is something that we we've talked about this right we've absolutely talked about this and there is a strategy there friends it's not just that we're you know that we want to go pick flowers we were we want to enjoy the experience of the game but we also want to play every aspect of this game and yeah. there are strategies there that are involved and we're well aware of them. yeah yeah agreed and i really do love that 100 hour you know i i love it that it's it's an art that's gone, you know, Cash, you've already said it, that leveling immersion into your character. I know Vlad has talked about it later on, I believe further on the clip where, you know, current MMOs, you're getting skills way too fast, way too fast. You're getting your levels way too fast. I'm enjoying the new launch of New World, but levels are way too fast. Oh, my goodness. Right. Way too fast. And I I'm chopped down this tree. And now I'm level 17. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, okay. Dude, I picked up a weapon today. I had all my skills almost in maybe 10 minutes. And I'm just like, I am so lost on this weapon because I haven't had a chance yeah. to get acquainted with it to really learn it. And now I feel like I don't remember any of these abilities. I feel like I've gotten them all all at once and I don't have any connection to it. And so I really feel like it's a lost art. MMOs today have been become way too streamlined for their own good. And it's good to see an MMO finally embrace the RPG aspect of the game because any MMO should truly embrace that RPG aspect. And that includes slowing it the heck down. And there's not very many companies that are willing to do that, not games that are willing to do that. And so it's finally sunny. Good to see it. Yeah, I'm 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 very happy with that. Um, JB, should I bring it into the yep. last one yep. here? Wrap us, All right. In there. So here we go. <clears throat> this is the last one. We don't have a sound clip for this one because like, honestly, the, the conversation was very long to try to explain it. But one of the most surprising thing this, things that came out of this, Vlanis showed up on my, on my stream uh, in the afternoon one day, a couple days ago. And I asked him, I, first of all, I was like, hey, congratulations on that interview. I want to know from you what the most surprised, the name two of the most surprising things that happened on the stream. One of them was the leveling. Uh, he that the the hundred plus hours to level to twenty five. The other one was this one, and this cannot be understated because nobody knew this, and it is an enormous part of the game. Okay, 
we all had an understanding about nodes and areas of influence. And then with the economy that goes around those things, we kind of thought we knew how it was going to go. And then we had castles and we kind of, kind of understood castles, but it's sort of been like a, a, a little stepbrother to the node system. Well, here is something that Steven said. The question was, could, I can't even remember what the damn question was, but like it, it came out about the possibility of having two metropolises that were close enough to a castle or something like that. And what Steven said blew everybody's mind. He said this, let's say you start a node. Let's say the Black Talon Trading Company starts a node and it progresses eastward. Okay, we just keep expanding to the east and we keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And next to us is the <laughs> gold talon trading company. <laughs> they start on that node and they progress westward and they just keep getting bigger and bigger and they're vassalizing all that stuff. You could end up with two metropolises that are literally twin cities right beside each other, right beside each other because that's how the game works. The castle system drives the economy. So the castle system is the economic region and the node system is the zones of influence. So you could have one castle with two metropolises that are right underneath it. And think about that castle is going to be deriving a quarter of the income, I believe, from the nodes in its influence. If you had a if you had a castle that had multiple metropolis in it, that is going to be the most powerful point in the entire game. And that was Steven's point is that not all castles are equal. That's not there are two different systems that exist on top of each other. That's insane. My mind just blew up when I when I heard this. I was like, hang on because I thought it was going to be like node, node gets bigger, almost like concentric circles, right? Where you end up with this big thing and then you have a node way over there and you get these big circles on the map. That is absolutely not the case. The nodes can progress in like very interesting shapes and you could end up with the castles really being your economic uh, center hold on this whole thing. That was wild. <laughs> This game yeah. is the perfect representation of the infomercials, quote, but wait, there's more. <laughs> but wait. <laughs> yeah. And a little bit of this is your brain on drugs. <laughs> this is your brain. <laughs> this is your brain on drugs. Because like, I mean, imagine the back end systems that would that would feed something like that. It's it's just insane to think about the work that has gone into something like that. It literally fries my brain thinking about it. But how awesome would that be to have this back and forth or maybe even a partnership for that area between those two uh between those two metropolises, metropoli, right? In between that castle. Insane. If they were allied, right, at uh -huh. some point, something's going to go wrong. And now you have some insane subterfuge. You have some insane uh, backstabbing going on. I mean, it just brings in all of the Game of Thrones. Yes, precisely. This is Game of Thrones, play. right? It is. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. We're going to be doing this. And at the same time, we can fish. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> cannot yes. wait to play this DMG. yeah no i when i heard that i was listening to this i'm like whoa like uh, it just flipped my whole brain on on the importance of the castle system the castles like people have been talking to me like well, what is this game going to be driven around and my answer has been for a long time caravans like caravans i think are massively massively important if you can run caravans at will you know, with whatever system you have set up to protect the damn things, and you're able to move that stuff, you're going to be incredibly rich. But the castle system, now that I understand just more about how it really rules over a lot of these nodes and sucks up all the money in that economic region, it is, oof, that is going to be huge. If you can own a castle, man, you are, you are winning. That, that might be how you win an MMO. I don't know. I mean, it's it's pretty cool. Dude, you change the map name to Westeros and, you know, a few different factions and we pretty much have yeah. Game of Thrones simulator with with this MMO. 
Like it's yep. just yep. so vast and it, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I feel like it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I know. <laughs> I want to be Tyrion. I want to be Tyrion. <laughs> Am I too tall to be Tyrion? You're absolutely too tall to be Tyrion. Damn it. You also have your whole nose. That's a problem. <laughs> I do. Oh, yeah, that's, that's still there. That's true. Still there. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna side. I'm gonna take us off to a little side here. I want to see if you guys noticed something. And this is, this is a, a harken back to the website. We've, we've tied up this I feel amazing you. interview. Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. Hats off, Can Lattice. I, yeah. Yeah. Lattice, Lattice you, buddy. You crushed this. Well man. done. Thank you. Thank you well for done. providing us so much information to talk about, brother. Whole show. Amazing. <laughs> um. In regards to their website, did you guys notice that the three word explanations for each race have changed? Oh, not for all of them. I didn't realize that. They have changed. Go on. All of them. Um, as an example, let me bring this up. Really? Because, yeah. And what's the Kalar? I, did they change like the? I had. I think a, the Kalar had order, which was always the one that I was like. Oh, so I had a tantrum over this. Valoon may okay. be your thing now. So the Kalar Heritage Duty Order, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you go to order. Yeah. the website, the Kalar Build Order Civilization on the wiki. Build Order, order Civilization. Civilization from the new Heritage Duty Order, which awesome. I love it. But do you know how many freaking videos we have? <laughs> we have to change now. What if these are like alternates? <laughs> you know, extra, extra <laughs> motto. <laughs> maybe it was, yeah, maybe Back it was up. like, hey man, we need to rebuild the website. Could you think of just three random words for each race or something? <laughs> you got a thesaurus on you? <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I did, I noticed that one and I was like, oh my God, they freaking changed these. And one of the reasons why is because um, law, what was it? Law, trade and something else for the Veiloon. I just did a video on this. Like my yes. latest Varen Chef video is a Veiloon dish. And um, yes, and you start it with those words, right? I start it with those words. <laughs> and the new words are now opportunity, presence and enterprise. So I look like a That's total bogus. dick. That's <laughs> <laughs> I look like I don't know any lore now. <laughs> That's bogus though, because those first three words make so much more sense with the Veiloon to me. Yeah, it's it's okay. Don't worry. I've I've already I've contacted uh customer support over the issue. And <laughs> Did you get your pre-order pack back? <laughs> I got my pre -order pack <laughs> back. No, but yeah, but it was I mean, I'm not gonna lie, like the, these new changes are really cool. And it, they're, they're basically like a little bit of a play on kind of the same words, uh, but I do like the new words better. It was just I wanted to throw it out there to you guys to see if you noticed that that that, that had happened from a from a lore perspective. Hang on, but you like the new Valian words better than the old ones? They're pretty cool, man. Yeah, I like the new ones. Run those by me again. Run the old one by me. Okay, so the new one is opportunity, presence, and enterprise, where the old one. It's lot. Let me let me pull it up so I don't mess it up. It is. Let's see. Here. No pressure. Yeah. No. 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 I'm just pulling up the wiki. It is. Boop, 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 boop. Law or trade law and hardship. So trade law and Dude, hardship no. I'm, uh, versus old ones. Opportunity, presence, and enterprise. Hardship. They put hardship in their motto. Do you know how much that says? That yeah. says a lot. Yeah. Right? It, it you're right. It's particularly for the Valoon. What does who, presence tell you? They live in Bakersfield. Is where they're pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Bakersfield Pigeon California Forge. is a desert, by the way. <laughs> oh, it's definitely not Pigeon Forge. Bakersfield is a desert. Um so yeah, I don't know. I guess maybe now I'm split. Now Sonny's got me all up in a tizzy over it, but yeah, no, I like the original ones. I, I, if you put hardship, if you put trade and hardship in your in your motto, I know who you are, right? Like yeah. you are traveling merchants. <laughs> that is yeah. what you are, right? Yeah, that is your culture yep. is 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 you will do anything to make the sale and, and you will you will survive no matter what. 
that tells me something. I don't think those new ones tell me anything. Presence, I'm, I'm uh, that word means Opportunity, presence. Opportunity, and... opportunity, okay. No, I'm not having it. <laughs> I object, your honor, objection. Yeah, it blew my mind. I was like, oh my God, they changed our lore. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the thing. You know what's going to be funny about this is that they're like, someone's going to listen to this podcast and intrepid and look around and go, wait, we changed it. Who, who, who did the website? And somebody's like, we got a new guy <laughs> in, in programming. Uh, this could be a problem. <laughs> well, and I think al along that same line, like, we are not changing our videos. We're not going to change those. Those oh, are no. those are historical no, records changing. at this point. <laughs> Why don't we They're change our videos? I don't even have the files to change those <laughs> videos at this point. Like those are over. Those are probably a year and a half ago since we did those. They were shorts, weren't they? Those shorts, yeah, and all the races. Yeah, yeah. those aren't. Oh. Those aren't changing. Almost feel like anyway, this was all therapy for cash. I, feel I like thought it was too. just yeah. interesting to bring up because as soon as I looked at the new website, I just went, you did what? <laughs> <laughs> the graphics are amazing on the video or on the uh, new website, by the way. The, yep. the renderings for the characters are just lights out. Although somebody in the chat said that the Pyre look more like classic uh, elves rather than the Navajo influence. So they Looking lost a little now. bit of the Navajo influence. Hmm. Which is... The VEC are just on point. Oh, oh yeah. God. They're looking really good. I'm yeah. not going to lie. The, the Renkai are, are tickling the ivories. The Kai VEC. Renkai. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, was, I love them. And then the Trandoshan looking Tolnar is just oh, yeah. so cool. Looking. Yeah. They yeah. did a great job. You know, they've done a good job on races when you like them all. Like, then they all yeah. look good, you know? All right, Nakua, and the Nakua. Oh, the Nakua. It's always a party. It's five o'clock somewhere with the Nakua. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you again so much for everyone for tuning in. This was Lore Forge. If you enjoyed your time here, let us know how we're doing. Take a few minutes. Let us know with a review, whatever podcast app you're using, or leave a comment and like all the fun things. Let us know what you think of the show down in the comment section. You can call us five one six eight seven five seventeen seventy six, and of course, you can email us. LoreForgeHQ at gmail.com. Sonny. You can go to our website, which is a link tree, and that's at LoreForge.com to find the links to the links. One of those links is YouTube. YouTube is where Cash is, is just living. <laughs> he's just living there. Uh, he's got all sorts of Varen Chef stuff out, and there is more to come for Halloween, and I'm looking forward to it. That's YouTube.com slash at LoreForge. Twitch. Twitch is where the rest of us live, and uh, we really enjoy that. That's twitch.tv slash loreforgedhq. I'm streaming a lot during the day, and you know, now we're gonna have a game. We're gonna actually be able to stream Ashes of Creation during the day, whenever, it's gonna be great. Except on all the days that it's not gonna be live. But it'll eventually be live all the time. And finally, Patreon, and God knows we've talked enough about Patreon tonight. Uh, that is at patreon.com slash loreforgedhq, where we now have the Tavern Regulars and the Barbacks. Cash. Yes, we do. Friends, you can follow us on X at loreforgedhq. You can follow us on our Instagram page at loreforgedhq. And I'd like to give a very warm welcome to a few new Discord members this week. Welcome to pmatty 93 Monet, who's been in dis Discord with us quite a bit playing New World. Uh, Spitfire, Dino, Opposite CL, and Bullvi. And I also want to make mention that on Saturday, November 9th, at noon EST until 8 p.m. EST, we will be doing our Extra Life charity campaign. Uh, we're going to be playing for Rady Children's Hospital, which is in San Diego, California. It is the uh, chosen Children's Hospital of Intrepid and closest to their studio. So uh, we've already got some donations flowing in, which is absolutely fantastic. There are links on our Discord for that. And then there will also be ways for you to donate on uh, November 9th when you watch us playing Ashes of Creation. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Well, everyone, you have a wonderful week. And the next time you hear from us, it actually be the night before A2, something like that. Whatever day we're recording. Anyway, have a great week. We love you. Take care. Peace, love, and honeybees. Safe travels, adventures. <laughs>